In other words, as long as you remain mindful of his ab Please, save your thanks. If anything, I sh- The world is a tr- You seem I desire to know what- And what influence- My apologies. For allowing me the honor of witnessing your mystical ways. I am willing to answer- So that's what you're curious about? <laughs> then allow me to tell you more. As you well know- a vision hunt decree is currently underway in Inazuma. Visions are a gift bestowed by the divine. People that have accepted this gift are now having their visions confiscated inexplicably. Sometimes in circumstances that leave their original recipients dead in the outset. Suppo not to mention, with no new electrovisions having been granted- She sounds less like an Archon and more like a tyrant. As far as I know, she is an Archon that pursues eternity. She will relentlessly carry out her will with no regard to what others may think or feel. Liyue's contracts are meant to benefit all who reside within Liyue. But what does Inazuma's pursuit of eternity bring to its people? It goes without saying that the people locked within Inazuma do not fare well. Sounds a lot like something- Oh? Have you encountered the Electro Archon before? With time, we will change, but the Shogun will remain the same. If you wish to find her, she will forever be there. There will come a day when I too shall wish to understand the answers to eternity from her. Ah, the time for your match is approaching. Oh, right! We got so distracted- If you have no other matters to attend to, then we can return together. Very well, let's go. Why isn't he here yet? Never mind, we can start by- Everyone, listen up! We've reached the climax of the Crux Clash! This is the fu- We've seen many exciting battles today, and now, at long last, the two finalists have emerged. Now, I'd like to introduce our first combatant. Though few have seen her, her reputation knows no bound. She strikes fear into the heart of Osile, and the mere mention of her name causes even Fatui Harbingers to turn pale in the face. Introducing Liu's Traveling Hero! Wow! <sighs> I've been waiting for this moment! I'm sure everyone witnessed her thrilling match in the semifinal. But today's final round will surely take things up. As for our other combatant, uh, he still hasn't a. Oh, come on, what could be taking him so long? You can't just forfeit. Apologies, everyone, just sit tight. They've got no other choice. If he doesn't show up, we'll just have to postpone the match. Wait a moment. Something doesn't seem right about this. Captain Beto, perhaps we should check on the prize. Traveler, come with us. Let me see. It's gone, all right. The vision is missing. Huh? Did somebody steal it? Who would dare do such a thing in broad daylight? We don't know when it was taken exactly. I never thought that someone here would have the guts to cross Captain Beto. No need to worry. Even the craftiest sleight of hand does not escape nature's watchful gaze. Hmm. The culprit has only acted recently. They will not have gotten far. The vision was the prize that I had offered, and it was my responsibility to look after it. I will be certain to get it back. Well, if you insist, I'll leave the matter to you then. I'll stay here and try to offer some explanation to all the spectators that came to see the match. If you would, please come with me. Um, but we're on an island. Where could he have possibly run to? Come with me. I can sense the winds are coming. A wind current? The winds have come at an opportune moment. Let's seize this chance. Ride the winds upward. From there we can continue our search for clues.
The winds have come at an opportune moment. Let's seize this chance. Ride the winds upward. From there we can continue our search for clues. heard it the moment it was stolen. Well, then why didn't you stop him? You'll see shortly. Stand clear. Freeze. Power cord. Cool it. Oh, so sorry. The winds are guiding us forward. The culprit is on the opposite shore now. You can hear that too? What does it sound like? Hmm. <laughs> Hubris. This way. Follow me. There may be an ambush waiting for us up ahead, but I trust that you are well prepared for such a scenario. The winds are guiding us forward. The culprit is on the opposite shore now. You can hear that too? What does it sound like? Hmm. Hubris. This way. Follow me. There may be an ambush waiting for us up ahead, but I trust that you are well prepared for such a scenario. The winds are guiding us forward. The culprit is on the opposite shore now. You can hear that too? What does it sound like? Hmm. Hubris. This way. Follow me. There may be an ambush waiting for us up ahead, but I trust that you are well prepared for such a scenario. The winds are guiding us forward. The culprit is on the opposite shore now. You can hear that too? What does it sound like? Hmm. Hubris. This way. Follow me. There may be an ambush waiting for us up ahead, but I trust that you are well prepared for such a scenario. What's the hurry? Hoarders, they're here! Get them! Treasure hoarders, just as I expected. In which case, please stand back. Don't get frostbite. 
Dodge this! Freeze! Pyrotechnics! Animal test 6308! Let's dance! Go, Barb! Cool it! You caught up with me? How is that possible? I had even prepared a boat to ensure a quick getaway, and still you caught up to me! No boat could ever match the speed of the wind. The wind? What are you talking about? Oh, I get it. Your vision. Drat! If I only had a vision! Or, if I could activate this one, then you'd never be able to catch- This has nothing to do with visions. You may be skilled at vanishing from a crowd, but it seems you know precious little about how to conceal yourself from nature's gaze. Additionally, your chosen escape route was flawed for reasons that are too numerous to go into, and on top of that, I could hear your boasting and proud laughter in the wind as I was pursuing you. In other words, you failed to meet any of the basic criteria for a grand heist, namely speed, stealth, and style. You... You... But most disappointing of all is the state of the vision in your hand. It appears that the vision doesn't respond to human desire indiscriminately. Fine! Fine! I admit it. I've had my eyes on this vision for quite some time now. I decided to register after hearing that this fighting contest was full of a bunch of lousy fighters. I fought my way to the finals and... Aha! So you were supposed to be our opponent! I'd intended to win the contest through skill alone all along. But then you showed up. After watching the semi-finals, I knew that I didn't stand a chance. But I wasn't about to give up on the vision so easily after coming all this way. Since there was no use in trying to face you in the match, I decided to put my skills to good use while everyone's attention was on you and Beto. I was convinced I prepared thoroughly for my escape, but somehow you still managed to catch up to me. After all I went through to get it, I think not. I know an empty threat when I hear one. Fine. But you'd better mean it. It didn't activate once I took it anyway. It's nothing but a useless shell to me. You know, according to the laws of the sea, the penalty for stealing is breaking the culprit's arms. Huh? You're not serious, are you? Not to mention that the item you stole was a prize. You didn't show up for the final match, and you damaged the reputation of the captain of the Crux Fleet. It seems that it would be only fair to brand the word thief on your forehead with a hot iron. Whoa, whoa, we don't need to go that far, do we? <sighs> I never would have guessed you could be so cruel. If this is where talking gets me, then forget it. I'll risk a fight. Oh, so sorry. Absorption test. Feel the beat. Time to rock. Enhanced animal module seventy five. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, do what you want, but please, don't brand my forehead, please! He has persevered to the bitter end, and now death looms near. Yet still the gods do not bestow their favor upon him. Put down the vision and leave.
I've changed my mind. No further punishment for you. Uh huh? What's wrong? Are you asking for more punishment? It's up to you. Such willingness is commendable, and fits the way of the samurai. No, no, no need for that. Thank you for releasing me. You truly are generous. Huh? Paimon doesn't get it! Were you just trying to scare him? I take no pleasure in frightening others. I was just testing all possibilities while the vision remained in his hands. When people are forced into a corner, that is when their greatest strength will appear. I thought it may be an opportunity for him to awaken the vision, but unfortunately, nothing happened. Yes. I wanted to know whether it were possible for an extinguished vision to be reawakened. From the moment he stole the vision, I decided to use him for this experiment. I've tried many other, though few tales tell of a masterless vision. After seeing you command multiple elements, I figured that nothing is impossible. Come, why don't you give it a try? Let's see if you- Huh. <sighs> the vision didn't seem to res- I see. So you are also unable to rekindle the vision. No matter. This was expected. I suppose this vision is still mine to take for now. Yeah, what's the story behind this vision anyway? The story begins with an old friend. He was once a good friend of mine. One day he asked me about a sword art of which he had heard, the Musono Hitotachi. I told him it can only be witnessed when divine punishment is administered. It is the pinnacle of the Raiden Shogun's skill, a symbol of ultimate power. But he replied, there must be one who can withstand it. There will always be those who dare to brave the lightning's glow. Then, the vision hunt decree arrived. People's aspirations were stripped away as the Raiden Shogun began to construct her ideal of eternity. While I was fleeing from place to place, I heard that my friend had challenged the Vision Hunters to a duel before the throne. A solemn yet brutal challenge. The defeated faced divine punishment, while the victors gain a second chance. Perhaps he thought he, of all people, should make a stand. Coming face to face with the Musono Hitotachi was all that he truly desired, after all. When I arrived at Tenchukaku, the duel was over. I heard his sentence of divine punishment, his severed blade hitting the ground. Perhaps that was the glory he had yearned to witness. In his last moments, what expression was on his face? Before I knew it, I had stepped forward and snatched the dying vision and was running from the scene. All I knew was that I mustn't let his hope, which burned so brightly, become buried among the ice-cold statue of a god. Perhaps one day, I may come to find that all I have done is meaningless. But as a wandering samurai, I find meaning in traveling and the sprawling beauty of nature that lies along the way, while still retaining the warrior way in my- Kazuha! <laughs> it's just another way of saying I do as I please. All right then, it's time we returned. Do not let my feelings trouble you, but thank you.
leave already? Maybe she went back- If you're looking for the captain, she was summoned by Lady Ningguang. It seems that the Crux Clash got out of hand this time and has attracted her attention. Captain Beto was muttering something about Ningguang being a stick in the mud as she headed off to Liyue Harbor. <laughs> it's not unusual for those two to be at odds with one another. But still, Captain Beto was disappointed she didn't get to witness the crowning of the new champion. She had been looking forward to it for quite some time. The one who stole the vision was originally to be this hero's opponent in the final round. He knew he stood no chance of winning the match, thus the wicked idea of stealing the prize. In which case, the Crux Clash comes to a clear-cut conclusion. Huh? So that's what happened? If that's the case, then the rules stipulate that he is disqualified. And our hero here is the champion. Paimon thought we'd win and all, but not like this. It doesn't matter. As the saying goes, honor given is honor deserved. Now, let me go prepare the champion's medal to award you. Yes, I believe so. Though Captain Beto is no longer present here, I'll be sure she receives word of it. She is a woman of her word, but the voyage to Inazuma is a treacherous one. You will be plagued by a perpetual tempest the entire trip. In fact, the relentless rain and wind are also an embodiment of the Raiden Shogun's will to close the nation. Hold on a second. You're saying she can change the weather just with the power of her mind? Let us not forget that this is one of the Seven Archons. If Liyue's Morax could form Guyun's Stone Forest by casting down his stone spears, then it should come as no great surprise that the Raiden Shogun is capable of summoning an eternal tempest. Suffice it to say that if you wish to journey to Inazuma, the Alcor will need some time. You will be notified once all the preparation. In the meantime, I intend to embark on a journey of my own. I will travel all across the vast lands of Liyue, in the hope of finding a way to reawaken the vision. Paimon believes you'll find a way for sure. Thank you. May both our journeys prove meaningful. One final word of warning. The part of your journey that lies after the storm may well prove to be the most arduous. Ad Astra Abyssosk. What can I do for you, Travel? Ah, yes. I've heard that you've already made a range. Now that I think about it, it's been quite some time since I last visited those lands. Unfortunately, I don't have any current intel that would be worth sharing with you. There you are. You're the traveler that Beidou will be taking to Inazuma, right? The fleet is nearly completed reprovisioning. Once the crews have taken a headcount, we can get underway. Captain Beto sent me to come get you. We'll weigh anchor as soon as you're aboard. Seems Beto is the captain of her word. Of course. There are many things that the captain insists upon. I'm sure you'll see for yourself once you're on board. So you'll be heading off then? 
I suppose congratulations are in order. Whether the journey before you leads to the heights of the heavens, or the depths of the abyss, each step you take is another achievement. Until we meet again, Ad Astra Abyssosk. Oh, it's kind of hard to say goodbye now. We practically see each other every day. <laughs> well, if that's how you feel, why not come and find me when you arrive? I'll be awaiting you on Narukami Island. So there's another Catherine at Ninazuma? See, there's no need to get all sappy now. <laughs> well, I guess it's time for you to bid farewell to Liyue Harbor. Now that I've delivered my message, I'll be heading back. The ship is currently anchored off of Guyan Stone. Okay, thanks for coming all this way to let us know. Just following orders. I'll see you two aboard. I should open a store here. Fireworks better would be watching them with my dad. My friend, what can I... Lady Cooking really outdid herself with that excellent fireworks display. I should have a store here. My friend, what can I get? I should open a store here.
which invoice is sent to the Ministry of Civil Affairs. Lady, quickly, we're ready to get her stuff. I can't wait to see my adorable daughter again. Ah, you finally made it. All these years come rain or storm, the Crux fleet has never suffered a delay. If it were anyone else, I might have set sail already. <laughs> Don't look too serious, I'm only joking. You're just on time, the crew have just finished making final preparations. <sighs> well, now that everyone's here, we set sail for the land engulfed by storm and tempest. The nation of eternity. Anchors! So, you finally made it! You sure kept me waiting, Captain. And it appears we have a couple of stowaways. Or perhaps I should say, honored guests. Shush! You can blame your almighty Shogun. The tempests around Inazuma have been growing all the more fierce lately. Though the fleet was fully up to the challenge, the inclement weather still caused some delay. Now then, let me introduce everyone. This is Toma, a trade partner that I've gotten to know recently. <laughs> you don't know how long I've been waiting to see you. Toma, these two are... Oh, no need for introductions. Their reputation precedes them. It seems even the stormy seas can't keep rumors of these outlanders' sterling deeds at bay. <laughs> oh, it's sure nice to hear you say that! <laughs> With any luck, it'll give you a head start here. Toma's resided on Rito for quite some time now. It wouldn't be going too far to say he's the fixer around these parts. If you run into any problems here, just talk to Toma. 
But if he tries to pull any moves on you, I'll be sure to deal with him personally the next time I'm around. <laughs> no need to worry. I'm sure we'll get along just fine. Good. Then if it's all settled, I'll be going. I wouldn't want to be caught with my sails down here. I do have a wanted fugitive on board, after all. Oh, right. Kazuha. Until next time, traveler. Remember to give it your all, no matter what perilous storms you may encounter. Fair seas, Captain Beto! Bye-bye! Now then, first things first. We need to go get you registered at the border checkpoint. Um, Paimon thought we were supposed to be keeping things on the down low. Are we just gonna walk into the government's hands? <laughs> Don't underestimate the reaches of the Sokoku Decree. You wouldn't be able to avoid inspection even if you tried. So we have to play by the rules, even if we're kind of bending them. Hello? Please state your name, identity, and the purpose of your visit. Oh, except you, Toma. You must be... new here. Uh -huh. Excuse me? Please provide the information requested, and also declare any goods you are carrying with you. Oh, well, I'm sorry. We cannot approve entry for purely personal reasons. So, unless you have a valid reason for visiting... It um... My apologies, but I'll have to ask you to... Here are the entry papers, for your kind perusal. What? Ugh, take your time, no rush or anything! <laughs> I just wanted to see what you'd say. Sorry about that. I see. Okay. Your papers are all in order. Welcome to Rito. <sighs> so, where do we go next? The Outlander Affairs Agency. Uh, they only check entry permits here. Sheesh. So it is super strict, just like everyone says. Well, let's not forget that to everyday folk in Inazuma, people from everywhere else are referred to as outsiders. As the word suggests, outlanders aren't very welcome in Inazuma with the Sokoku Decree in force. Not even on Rito, where they've established an outsider settlement. <laughs> I like how you think. I've got a feeling we're going to get along very well. Now, let's head over to the Outlander Affairs Agency. Most of the current rules were put in place. A Kanjo Commission? Yes, one branch of the Tri Commission of Inazuma, responsible for growing and managing the nation's wealth. Um, you really haven't heard of it before? You've completed the entry procedures, yes? And now you want to apply for residency? Both of you? Yes, please. Okay, the processing fee will be two million mora. Two million? For a processing fee? That's right. One million per applicant, which makes two million total. Don't worry. You can trust my math. Paimon wasn't so much questioning your math as... <laughs> Ma'am, these two here are good friends of mine. I think you'll find I'm one face you recognize. Ah, Mr. Toma, it's you. By way of courtesy, allow me to reduce it to... 400,000 more a total. <laughs> Thank you ever so much, Miss Eureka. But as this is just a processing fee, I think 600 mora should cover it if I'm paying on their behalf. I'll treat you to dinner too. How does that sound? That's not how you haggle! By all means, bargain the price down, but- 
All right, then. As you wish, Mr. Toma. I will make a record. <laughs> Much obliged. What? She went from two million down to six hundred? There's something seriously wrong with people's sense of finance around here! <laughs> it's not as mind-boggling as you think. A processing fee is just a figure of speech. The way some here at the agency see it, the fees are easy money, so it becomes a question of how much they can make. So when the day comes that some poor merchant from overseas with more money than cents gets stuck here and needs to apply for residency... Then they'll milk them for all their worth! <laughs> exactly. It's at times like this that having a local friend really comes in handy. Yes, but when you're an outlander in Inazuma, far from home in this close nation era, there's very little that can be done about it. The most that overseas merchants can do to look after themselves is stick together. That's how the International Trade Association came about. So it's a trade association built by and for outlanders? Yep. And as well as advancing commercial interests, the association provides help, support, and structure for outlanders trying to survive on Rito. Essentially, it's an association devoted to both commercial excellence and survival skills. <sighs> Sounds like just staying alive is an achievement when you're an outlander in Ina. I see. So this is the real purpose of your trip. Yes, given that you are outlanders, it's certainly a lofty aspiration. After all, the Raiden Shogun is the most exalted and revered one in all of Inazuma. She is a deity who reigns on high, while all other life gazes up in awe. Huh. I was going to say nothing is set in stone when it comes to who you will encounter in this world. Who's to say you won't happen to run into the Raiden Shogun one day after lunch? Uh-huh. And is that likely? Okay, I'll give it to you straight. I know of a way to introduce you to the Raiden Shogun. Wow, the Rito Fixer is better connected than we thought! <laughs> I mean, it will take all the resources I have at my disposal, but it could be done. However, before we get there... Connections come at a high price, you understand? Ugh, not you <laughs> <laughs> No, no. In this instance, when I say price, I'm not talking about Mora. In fact, there's no real cost as such. It's just that... If this is something you really want, you'll have to agree to help other people solve some of their problems first. I like to do things in a way that keeps everybody happy. It's my own personal rule for dealing with situations like this. Sounds very reasonable to Paimon. You're the man in the middle, so you have to trade favors to keep everyone indebted to you. <laughs> Why do I get the feeling you're making me out to be some sort of crook? Uh, never mind. Here's the situation. As I touched upon earlier, the members of the International Trade Association are constantly struggling to survive. Recently, things seem to have gotten more difficult than ever for them, so just go and check things out. See if there's any way you can help. The head of the association is called Carisio, and he's a good friend of mine. Go talk to him. I'll wait for you here. Oh, huh? Hello there. You must be seeking refuge with the International Trade Association. Ah, the Outlander Affairs Agency took you for all your worth, I suppose. Ah, good. 
That's a relief. <sighs> you need to be careful, or you'll find yourself losing your savings all at once. We heard the association has been having some difficulties lately. Is that true? Yes. Left, right, and center. Obstacles at every turn. But that's nothing new for us. The Sakoku Decree certainly makes things difficult for anyone who wants to come here from overseas. But it's not the root cause of our woes. The Sakoku Decree might restrict our scope of activity, but in and of itself it doesn't stop us from being able to enjoy a comfortable existence. No. What's really squeezing us Outlander merchants dry is those Mora Grubbers from the Kanjo Commission. Of the three commissions, that's the one that oversees everything on retail, isn't it? That's right. They impose astronomical tax rate, unbelievable regulations, and that's not the worst of it. They just issued a new tax decree recently that, for some reason, completely changes the way we pay our taxes. It used to be Mora, but now it's something called Crystal Marrow. Crystal Marrow? What's that? Ugh, something that most of us in the association had never heard of before either, until the new decree came along. Eventually, one of the older Liyue merchants recalled that he once shipped a batch of it to Snezhnaya in his youth. So, in order to pay our taxes, we began an arduous search for this crystal. But then we found we'd only managed to create a bigger problem for ourselves. The rising demand for crystal marrow drove the... <sighs> now there's only one vendor who even has it in stock. We can't get a hold of it anywhere else. Uh, isn't that what they call a monopoly? Exactly. So this vendor keeps pushing the price up, and we have no choice but to buy from them because the tax decree forces us to. It's a vicious cycle, the consequence of which is that our taxes will soon exceed our profits. And once that happens... <sighs> We've tried communicating with the Commission directly, but this is a nation where the cries of a few struggling merchants will never be heard over the ever-present roar of thunder. Ah, <sighs> Fontaine, my dear homeland. I miss you an awful lot at the moment. Sounds awful. They're really bleeding them dry. What do you think we should do? But Carice is the head of the association, and even he hasn't had any luck. <sighs> right, and besides, I think this may well be the fate they've ordained for us. Okay, well, we could try tackling the problem by going to the other party involved. <sighs> that vendor... I've actually done business with him in the past, but after a point he stopped contacting us. I have no idea what... Well, it definitely sounds like he's being unfair. How hey, that's a pretty good idea. Since you're not affiliated with the association and you're new to Rito, he may just let his guard down. <sighs> if I remember correctly, our usual meeting point with him is under a tree by the coast in the residential district. See if you can find him there. Got it! We're on! I don't think I recognize you. Are you new arrivals? So, what do you need with me? The sheer nerve. You don't go around asking questions like that. If I gave you my sources, I might as well hand you the whole darn business. Trade secret, got it? You know what trade and secret mean, right? This guy's got a bad attitude. Ha! <laughs> Are you even buying? Oh, I see what's going on here. Karisu and his associates sent you here to try and plead their case, didn't they? <laughs> They're wasting their time. The price is non-negotiable, not by a single mora. Hey, what's your problem? Get out of here, go on. Tell them they're lucky to be buying from me in the first place, and they ought to be more grateful. If it weren't for me, they'd be in seriously hot water. What are we gonna do? 
the sky. Good idea! Let's check back in with him. Sorry, I need to think about it. Mm hmm? That was quick. You resolved it already? Um, actually, we're having a little trouble. No? Oh? Well, by all means, tell me what you need. I'll Getting you to go fixing things when you've only just arrived is quite a demand. Oh, that guy? I'm familiar. He used to be a bit of a sorry sight, selling shells that he collect on the beach just to get by, but he seems to have suddenly shot up in the world recently. I can only assume he must have found himself a patron after leaving the International Trade Association. Huh. You're saying he used to be a member of the International Trade Association? So he's an outlander too? Yes. Couldn't you tell when you spoke to him? That's right. Werner was born in Mondstadt, then went into the shipping business, trading between Lia and Inazuma. When Inazuma closed to the outside world, he was one of a group of outlanders that ended up stranded on Rito. Huh. What a bummer! The International Trade Association was initially very generous to him, but... So he left the association and turned his back on them! <laughs> I'm sure it's more nuanced than that. I believe even the most ungrateful and cold-hearted of people still have some amount of gratitude and warmth left in them somewhere. Really? Is that all you need to know? Well then, it sounds like you may have found a way in with him. What are you doing back here? Just because I got plenty of time on my hands doesn't mean I want to waste any of it talking to you. Huh? Where is this coming from? Mondstadt? You were talking about... Mondstadt? Goodness, I can sense it now. So familiar, but I can't remember the last time I was there. <sighs> the scent of Mondstadt. Oh, how it takes me back. Ah, oh, my hometown. The home of freedom. How I long to go back and visit. Oh, it's working! <sighs> oh, oh, <clears throat> So, trying to play my heartstrings like a liar, are you? I know what you're up to. Huh? What is this? What are you up to now? Just close your eyes already! You mean... the sound of the ocean? <gasps> Leah Harbor! I can see it so clearly. Uh, oh, and the sound of the waves! The calls of the merchants! Xiao Lanterns! <laughs> I'm right there at the Lantern Rite! Oh, look at them floating up into the sky. This guy has a really active imagination. Either that or he really does miss Liyue Harbor. <sighs> Liyue.
Wait. Stop. That's enough. Don't make me relive it anymore. My poor heart can't take it. You mean... the folks from the International Trade Association? And I suppose they are far from home, just like me. Often, I'll sneak down to the shore at night and listen to the sound of the waves. I like to imagine... I've run into folks from the association more than a few times doing just that, but I always hide my face and slip away. <sighs> Don't you think I've wanted to talk things through with them and free myself from this anguish? Um, well, no one's stopping you, so... <sighs> They're so resilient. None of them had anyone else to rely on, so they rallied together, committed to finding a way to survive. But I couldn't do it. I'm not strong enough. So, I caved. Those people, they'd make the smallest of promises, offer the most measly benefits, and I'd do whatever they asked of me. And make Mondstatters look like the worst people in the world. Alright, I'll tell you the whole story. It's eating me up inside, and I can't take it anymore. You ready to talk now? But I betrayed them. I can't show my face there. Ugh, come on, you scaredy cat. Look, you messed up, but now it's time to make things right. So come on, get it off your chest. What's the deal here? It's a scheme by the tax collection Ashigaru. Keijiro and his companions. They start by overtaxing the merchants, then take the extra crystal marrow they receive and stockpile it. Once the merchants run out of places to buy crystal marrow, they get me to sell that extra stock back to the merchants at an extortionate price, with the proceeds going to the tax collection Ashigaru. It's just... it's plain evil gouging them like this. I'm their puppet, yes. But my cut is a tiny fraction of what we take in total. It's barely enough for me to live on. Evidence? Hmm. You're right. Without conclusive evidence, he will never admit it. Now that I think about it, whenever I report back to him after a sale, he always heads to the same place. It's always made me suspicious. As it happens, I handed some Mora over to him not long ago. I, I can show you where he went if you want. Really? Well, then there's no time to lose! Let's go!
I haven't been out in a while. Yeah. 